All right, welcome back. Let's try another uh, another project here. This is uh, something I get asked a lot: is uh, what can you do with obsidian? Can you work it? Can you blow it? Can you can you do anything with it? It's natural glass after all, right? And the short answer is no, not really. I I, I can't. I can't really melt this stuff and move it around, uh, but I can anchor things to it. If I have a small enough piece that it doesn't fracture from the thermal shock and being applied to the flame. Uh, smaller pieces such as uh, some of these here I can work on these and uh, simply draw something onto it in three dimensions and have it just sit there on it and be a be a novelty and that's uh, that's about all I can do so uh, let's let's give it a shot see if we can do that without uh, cracking this stuff obsidian is uh, a really cool looking natural glass so what can we do with it all right, here's our battle plan for how we're going to attach our little glass item to this piece of obsidian uh, in a lamp working studio. We are going to start off, uh, I'm going to pull off some stringer of cobalt over white down to about four millimeter. Um, it's going to match the head that is body, considering it's an octopus section. Uh, which is also cobalt over white with a couple of milli eyes already set into it just kind of a, an elongated egg shape with a couple of eyes on it at this point and using a four mil uh, clear punny to handle it uh, when it comes time to drop on the little black dots on the tentacles uh, I've prepped a two mil really opaque black rod uh, stringer down to about two millimeter That'll make it really easy to apply those real precise as opposed to using some stock, say, 6 to 8 millimeter color rod, which is not going to yield precise results. You're going to get big splotches. So we've got our head all ready and prepared. We've got this heated and on the uh, obsidian, which is going to be glowing on the corners, but not so much in the centers. And really try and avoid uh, overheating these sharp uh, edges as they will bubble and kind of turn white. So keep your piece away from those sharp edges. You can go over like 90 degree edges. That's got quite a bit of thickness to it and it disperses the heat well uh, without uh, devitrifying the edge of the obsidian there. Just a little note. All right, so once we've got that all drawn on there, uh, we'll snap off our punty and put the thing in the kiln and bring it down real slow and hope that it survives while knowing that we're dealing with some really low quality control material but it's mass produced so what do you expect from obsidian alright so the next project we're gonna do a, a tree frog on a similar chunk of obsidian and this is gonna be the body profile uh, front side top oblique um, remember when attaching that punty that we want to uh, bring it in to first attach it to the eye make a good little punty connection there because you can polish that up because it's only clear uh, then bring it around bend it you know heat it in the flame and then bend it around and tag that little tip of it just to the tip of the nose and that'll give you a good uh, axial location that goes straight down the center line of the body so that you can rotate this thing uh, in the flame and heat and get it nice and uh, evenly heated and ready to drop on to the legs which we've already drawn on in this position uh, be sure to get the angles and directions right it's not real hard there's an upper leg section here which is really thick we'll be doing it with four mil just kind of uh, putting it on and kind of wiping it down so it goes real thick and then laying it on lightly here to produce a slightly thinner lower leg section also using it out here in the ankle area up to the toes uh, that they, just, they have kind of an elongated ankle before it gets into their foot and there I like to do four toes because there aren't any three toed frogs there may be a few five toed but four is a good safe number and it looks really pleasing to the eye so there's our leg arrangement the pattern and you can see that drawing the legs on first means you can tuck them in tight bring the toes up together and when you drop on the body the body is probably going to go over the top of a lot of this but it doesn't matter the stuff that sticks out will look right and you'll have the right number of toes and things so that's the reason we draw on the legs first and the toes and then we drop the body on top because the frog's body sits on top of his legs uh, anyway uh, that's our battle plan. Let's go see how it works. First I'm going to get a 
fairly large rod. Uh, this is going to be my handle that I'm going to hold it with uh, while I'm working it. I suppose you could use claws or something like that. That might even be better. I may try that in the, in the next video. But uh, for now, I'm just going to try heating up one of these and grabbing a piece of obsidian and sticking it to it. This will probably be about the noisiest part is just heating this up. Just trying to find which end I wanted to hook it to. So I think it's going to set up right rather like this. So I just kind of stuck it to it. And we're going to let gravity pull it down, remove some of that acute angle. And uh, hopefully it'll be strong enough that we can work this piece, but not so strong that at the end when we pull on it or put a little bit of heat to it, it doesn't pop right off. So we'll put this uh, original stone color on the bottom, giving us more of the top. All right, so our first one here is our octopus. Uh, just try and keep the flame coming in at a, at a kind of a, a half angle between the obsidian and the stringer so that you've got plenty of heat on your obsidian actually get it to kind of glow before you put the glass to it, uh, but just barely. And at the same time, you're trying to put enough blow around heat on it that the entire piece is staying kind of kind of luminous. There we go. And the, uh, the obsidian won't move. It stays exactly where it is. The only exception being if a piece cracks off while you're working with it. So it, it does feel like it's really adhering to it and staying in place. It does not feel like it's uh, uh, just halfway on there. I'll do four legs first, uh, kind of equidistant, and then I'll put one leg in between each of them, guaranteeing I, I did eight and not seven or six or nine. Yeah, and avoiding those sharp edges, but you can lay it over those square edges uh, and just try to avoid putting heat on the uh, corners themselves. Again, they, they do kind of bubble up. And uh, the little uh, dark dots going out each tentacle, uh, each arm. And just quick little dots. And by using a very fine stringer, they can be applied really quickly. In fact, I'm not positive, but I think that's real time. Yeah, it is. So it's almost like a sewing machine, fast. You just go chick, 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 and put them on. And keeping the whole thing warm. Take a look at it and see if it's ready to go. Sometimes it's, it's good to go back with the dental tool and uh, push things around a little bit or give them a specific, uh, like a crease between two adjacent tentacles so that they don't merge together too much. But this looks pretty good. So we'll grab the head out of the kiln, heat it up, and well, head, that's, that's actually the body on an octopus, right? So we'll drop the body on, and then kind of pose him, just look at him and pull him, and let it uh, set up enough that it doesn't uh, want to move after you remove the punny. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And we'll pop off that punty. And notice I set it down on the marvering pad just in case it broke off at the handle instead of the punty. Yeah, and we'll remove that. Oh, see now we took off a little bit of the end of the tentacle and a little bit of the dark stringer. So uh, we'll have to replace that and uh, just wrap the new section of tentacle over where the obsidian fractured off. And then a few dots of that little dark string around there. And that's it. We've got our octopus on obsidian. And it's held together. So let's move on and do the next one here. Uh, a frog, a little green tree frog on the obsidian. Now you got to visualize 
the whole frog before you start. Like right now I'm figuring out where I'm going with this thing. So this is his rear left leg upper portion. And there's going to be his rear left leg lower portion. And then the, oh, it doesn't show it there, but that was the elongated ankle. And then opposite, uh, I'm going to do the other leg. So its back legs are kind of hanging over the edge of this thing. And then its front legs will be located up closer to the punty on the left side there. It'll draw on the uh, front right uh, upper arm and lower, and then the uh, left arm. All right, and then we'll get some real thin stringer and draw on the toes. Just four little quick lines on each one of them. And again on the rear for the, the legs toes. Four quick wipes again. And another four. It's actually good to like count those out. You become OCD about it, but I've made too many critters with different numbered toes before. So <laughs> keep track of them. And there we go. A little bit thinner stringer for putting the dots on. It'd be a little bit more precise. And after applying the dots, we'll have to heat up the entire area and kind of melt those in smooth or semi-smooth. It's okay if they're a little rough, but you don't want anything sticking up that could be knocked off in the future uh, that'll pop off. And again, I'm using the dental tool here to uh, kind of delineate where like toes and legs and ankles and elbows are. So if when you're working it, they become a little rounded off and start to run into each other, you can heat them up, then go back and give them that definitive shape with the little shaping tool. Uh, a knife will work too, but I like the little dental tool. And then a little bit of uh, rust for each of the little toe pads. And at the same time, we're, we're trying to get just enough blow around heat that we're, we're keeping that entire piece just kind of on the verge of uh, glowing. So we're not letting it cool down so much that when we go to apply heat in any one place, it'll cause a fracture. And then this is just flattening down the toe pads. They look better when they're little discs rather than splotches. There we go. Legs in place, so we just need to drop a body on it. Now you'll notice I've changed the angle on the frog's punty uh, to where it's now pointing up. And that, that gets uh, a better angle for me to drop it down on this particular piece. Because I can heat up the bottom and watch the other one and uh, put the flame between the two and then drop them together rather quickly. You do want that very nice and hot when you put those together. And you have to push down uh, to create the weld and join everything. But before it sets up, pull backwards and lift up on it a little bit, and that will remove the acute angles. If you just push down, you are going to create acute angles where the body lays over the other materials. <clears throat> so there we go. Now, this time the uh, piece connecting to the obsidian popped off first, and I'm holding it now by the eye milly, which is okay. We'll just grab it with some uh, marble tongs there and hold on to it. That's good for holding that irregular shape, a little bit funky. I almost dropped it with the tweezers. So this is holding on to it nicely. We'll polish up that eye where we had our punty and even the tip of the nose where the punty was prior. And uh, put a little a couple of nostril spots there. And I'm going to come in underneath of the jaw and lift it up a little bit. And that's going to kind of define that little frog's lower jaw, give him kind of a smile. And there we go. We did get a couple of them out of there. I had a few fractures, uh, but uh, nothing catastrophic. And I was able to save the pieces I was working.
So that's what I was able to do with obsidian. It uh, is very inert. I, I don't get it to move. I can't blow it, but it does make a neat base for natural things. All right, thank you. I hope you like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.